Welcome everyone. Today we have Harald Friedel from Austria doing his presentation on why we have to take action on circular right now. Harald, please take the floor. Yes, thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much to the team and congratulations to the team for organizing this conference for the second time. I think it's a great initiative to have this as a bright signal all across the Balkans and into Europe what is happening to focus on the action that is really right, right now and bring all the stakeholders together. Um, and I'm very honored um, because I've seen the team evolve over the last month and it's really fantastic, the approach and the way how they have entered into this collaboration. So thank you very much for all of you for being here. And I will try it in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes to touch upon why circular economy uh, is so important right now, how it links with your own personal journey as a human being, and why we are seeing a real breakthrough here and have seen a real breakthrough here that makes me really, really hopeful for the next months. So let me start how I got involved in the circular economy. Many uh, have uh, called me a cheerleader for the circular economy, somebody who has been very ded dedicated to the cause and truly really had the opportunity to be part of this global and national debate for a couple of years right now. I was very proud that together with my team, when I was CEO at Circle Economy, we launched the Global Circularity Gap Report. And this is how I also entered the stage where we established that 9% of the world is only circular, of the world economy, that more than 90% of the resources globally are wasted. I also enjoyed very much in my home country, Austria, to work a circular economy accelerator with the Ministry of Climate Action, where we worked on a circularity gap report for the country itself, and where we brought together in a whole conference, in a big summit at the beginning of this year, all the stakeholders from business, civil society, and government to see what kind of action is needed. So I'm always very interested in the ecosystem aspect, because we all have to collaborate to bring circular economy to life. I've been also very inspired by my collaborations in the last year. Uh, for example, with Fairphone, we worked together with the team on a circular phone, or just in recent weeks, I was blessed to work together with the European shoe brand on developing uh, strategies, how to get closer to a circular shoe. And I've seen collaborations around circular economy happening in all can, kind of different industries, in the cement industry, in the car industry, but also what you see on the slide on the music industry. So it's relevant to all the work we are doing. And at the moment, trying to bring all of this also into my capacity as advisor to the Global Climate Action Champion that is trying to bring uh, all the business and philanthropic and finance actors into the global work on climate change. And we just recently also came together in Egypt for COP27 for the last climate change negotiations. So I've been very deeply involved on a company level, on a city and regional level with business alliances and whole countries on the circular economy. And it's very interesting what we have been seeing over the last weeks and months. When I try to reflect what do I actually want you to take away from this topic today and from my speech? I was thinking about this. Uh, I fulfilled my dream just a couple of weeks ago when I did my license for skydiving. And when I was jumping out of the plane at my seventh jump, I thought, what do we want the people to really take away? And it was a funny, funny realization that actually is very much in line with what I've experienced over the last months and years. I would like you to take away that the only thing that matters now in the year, at the end of the year 2022 is action. And I will explain you now in the next minutes how action can be taken and maybe let's take together a promise to each other how we can take action tomorrow. I would like you to walk you through this breakthrough year, then also talk about why systemic change is needed to answer the complex crisis that we are facing at the moment and how to take action. Currently, and this comes from nobody less than the CEO of one of the biggest cement uh, companies in the world from Holcim that said in the first half of this year that the circular economy is the biggest business opportunity of our times. 
So the topic has landed in the core industrial sectors of our planet. That makes me really, really enthusiastic. And we've also seen another huge player. And you might have seen that in the news, Google launched its first circular economy accelerator. Many people have contacted me about this and it's really fantastic to see their focus, how their data-driven uh, approach to things can support the drive towards a circular economy. Uh, what is also an interesting aspect when we look at this breakthrough year of circularity, it is that for example, in the EU, due to the current crisis in and around the Ukraine, we have seen a lot of uh, discussion about resource dependency and how different countries can take care of their independence and their resources better in the next year. And I, to my understanding, the circular economy has also become a very political issue. One that is driven by economic realities, by a view of the world where we want to do fundamentally better and where the EU wants to now also is sending signals to lessen the resource dependency of the continent and for example, about China, we therefore will look into much more local value chain. And I think with more local value chains, that's a big opportunity on how we can transition much faster to a circular economy, because that is what it is all about. And not only in the normal economy, in the producing economy, also in the financial sector, I've been picking up very interesting signals, and you might have seen them, um, that uh, one of the big funds that is driving a circular economy and has this as one of its investment principle or as the main investment principle, circularity capital has raised a new record round with over 200 million euros that the first startups have grown into unicorns. Uh, in Berlin, Ruber is become a unicorn hopefully soon or Remarket in France has become one of the first unicorns. So with over 1 billion market value, uh, which is based on circular economy principles. And therefore we see these are very relevant uh, topics at the moment in the investment economy. And some VCs, venture capital uh, funds have also reported that they have seen a whole spike uh, up to plus 70% in their investments in circular economy in the last year. So I think what is really, really positive in the economy where I see a lot of good signs from companies really stepping up uh, is that there are targets set now. That Philips, for example, the C uh, CEO of Philips put his head out and said, I want in the next three years to reach 25% of our sales that should come from circular economy profit models. And the second big aspect next to the leadership that is taken by companies that set now clear targets around circular economy, which is driving this topic forward is also the reminder that comes back and back again around more collaboration. We'll only realize the circular economy with more collaboration. Just look at the latest report from the Plastics Pact and the close collaboration in the Plastics Platform. There we see, and this was one of the main recommendations of the report, that a further acceleration and more impact we will only see if all the stakeholders in the value chain work together. And thirdly, one of the big trends this year, and a colleague from Denmark has given this assumption or this opinion in one of the interviews, the circular economy is shaping consumer habits. The circular economy, this was the headline of one of the interviews, is the consumerism of the future. So all of these are main trends where we see that this topic will produce and come much more into speed as we are going into 2023. So this was the first aspect. We are seeing much more acceleration for a change towards a circular economy. And we have to keep this optimism alive to be able to create a further and better planet and better and local jobs for the people. Why is it necessary? to have a systemic approach to things. And the circular economy is such a systemic approach that is advocating for systemic change. We need this because we are seeing multiple crises at the same time. And I don't wanna go so much into what these crises are because we hear of them every single day. But I want you to remember maybe these five figures, one, 10, 100, 1,000, and 10,000. One, 1% of the world has at the moment more wealth than the rest of the globe. 
10 is the amount of years we still have. Now, already we are down to eight or nine years, as the climate scientists say, to avert uh, climate chaos. 100 is, and I keep on repeating this number because I think it's so shocking, is the amount of species that we are eradicating from the planet every single day. 1,000 is the support, 1,000 times more support is at the moment still going to the fossil fuel, fossil fuel based industry compared to the support that is going into the bioeconomy. This is certainly a disbalance that we need to look at if we want to invest in a green and circular economy of the future. And 10,000 is the amount of wildfires we saw all over the globe in this big environmental crisis we saw unfolding in recent months that are alive. These fires are burning and destroying the ecosystems of this planet every single day. So we have to really, and this is a short reminder for all of us, change from a linear model where most of the resources, more than 90% of the resources end up in landfills or incinerated into a circular economy with its principles of recycling, reducing, reusing, and maintaining that are so key, that are the key to really doing fundamentally better and achieving prosperity for all as we are working on that. And that brings me to the final aspect of what I wanted to share with you today. How do we get there? And if I would be in person with you in the room, and I'm really, really, really very sad I can't be this today, I hope next year we'll meet in person. But for the moment, I have to share a story with you that one of the most famous teams in the world is the rugby team from New Zealand, the All Blacks. And if before every game, they are dancing together. They are unleashing the power of the group, the power of collaboration. And only with this strength and collaboration, we will find a way forward. The current situation of what we need to do as governments and businesses and, and as individual consumers is currently still a bit shocking because a recent report found that only a few countries, not enough, have circular economy action plans, that only a third of the countries globally are at the moment introducing and including the reductions of CO2 emissions that they can get from implementing circular economy strategies and are also implementing and including this into the climate action plans. So if only a third of the countries is doing this, there is a big more than 70% chance for countries to improve, to now start the global and national collaborations to establish uh, circular economy roadmaps and action plans as soon as possible. And we discussed at the team also to, for me to share what is really needed right now. I believe when I speak to the ministers of this world uh, that I really encourage them, not only one minister, the environment minister, but all ministers that are together responsible for implementing circular economy strategies. So the finance ministers, the ministers of education, the ministers of economy, of the economic affairs, and also of digitization, as well as the ministries of environmental affairs, they have to come together and really establish these action plans. The businesses, they have to continue to move towards circularity. And there, it's about really stepping up the game to follow the heroes that are showing that it's possible that circular economy is also a profitable model if you look at the investments also over the midterm. So take a leap of faith, take the leadership to all the CEOs in the world and the region that are listening today and look at this as something where you are actually contributing to the planet where you can involve your employees and where you can make your company future-proof. And us, because I'm not a big friend of finger pointing that the government should do, the businesses, we, as consumers have to make a decision every single day with our wallet that we are buying circular, sustainable products. And there are many of them out there that we can take a choice from. And we have to ask ourselves, are we willing to embrace ourselves, the consumerism of the future? Where you maybe not always need to own everything, where you are leasing your clothes, leasing your cars, where you're building buildings in a modular way and really embracing a new economic paradigm. And I want to add something very personal. As somebody who has been on the journey on trying to identify 
what is the personal impact I can have in the world? It's something I've been really dealing with uh, many years. And then finally, I understood that me as a person, I can have the best impact in the world when I see myself as part of the global system. I'm part of my own household. I'm part of my company, of my organization, of my country, and also of the globe. And if I understand myself as part of this, I can think and therefore, for example, apply circular economy lens and ask myself, what is the best impact I can achieve? And I believe when we're asking ourselves this, how we can contribute and make ourselves a good living, but at the same time, balance this out with the interests of the ecology, of the nature, of the people around us, we can find a balanced and happy way to live, to contribute to the world and build all together in a collaborative way the world of the future that we want to see. So it's a very personal choice. Many people, leaders, social entrepreneurs, investors, government leaders come to me and ask or comment. It's a hard way. And yes, I always say it takes a lot of courage. We we'll need to embrace new values for collaboration. Values that I believe have for us a very positive impact as human beings, but they are radically different than what we often see now in the old economic paradigm. Because inclusive collaboration, this is what we really need to find solutions that give answers to the root problems of the economic and financial and social crisis we are seeing at the moment. They always come from collaboration. When a worker circular economy accelerator in Austria, for example, the big industry players, as well as the small startups or the NGO civil society and the government says, we can't do it ourselves. So we have to create these communities, these places of transparent collaboration where we're building trust, where we are establishing ways how we work together for the future and how we build the trust with each other so we can act on them together. I believe if we put the humans, if we put the planet at the center of decision-making, if we are saying we are voting for eco and not ego, we really have a chance to give a fundamentally better answer to the crisis that we're seeing at the moment. And we are making ourselves part of the solution. So I therefore suggest to you, let's make a commitment together here at the Balkans Go Circular Conference and let's say, I will take concrete actions to implement the circular economy as of tomorrow, even better of today. And because to my mind, it's really a prerequisite, I will engage in transparent collaboration to make a circular economy happen in my country. If this inspires you and you want to learn more, or if you want to look for ways how to collaborate, then please get in touch. I will also share with the team my social media accounts. You can look at this anytime and please get in touch so that we can create the future we want together. Please have still a good day today, a fantastic conference, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you and collaborating very soon. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.